Let's talk solar panels. What up, I'm I from Ask God Solar, where I like to keep solar simple. In my last video, I talked about solar power stations for beginners. In this one, I'm going to talk about solar panels with regard to power stations. It's not going to be a deep dive into how solar panels work and all that jazz. We're just going to talk about it in relationship to power stations. So first things first, we're going to talk about types of solar panels. There are quite a few, but the main ones are rigid or glass panels, folding panels, which fold. <laughs> And then there's flexible panels. Sometimes people confuse flexible panels with folding panels. They are not the same. <laughs> you cannot fold a flexible panel. And you kind of don't want to flex a folding panel. But anyway, here is a rigid or glass panel. These are typically tough. They can stay outside for forever. You don't have to bring them in. You don't necessarily have to be worried about them. I mean, you know, hail could damage them and things like that, but hail can damage anything. But they are really built to withstand the elements for sure. These are my favorite because I want to get solar power all day and I don't want to worry about managing them. Then you have your flexible panels. They have a little bit of give to them, but you don't want to bend them too much because you can break them. They just have a little bit of give. And this is what you would call a folding panel. It's a folding panel because it typically folds. This one is a bifold. It's a pretty nice looking panel. Video coming on this one soon. This is the big blue. They fold in half or triple or quad fold. The bifolds are my favorite hands down. These panels typically have a few types of connector types. The most popular connector type on these panels is what's called MC4. And it is very commonly almost always found on glass panels with the exception of that Harbor Freight panel. I'm sorry if this is super bright. This is an MC4 connector. It's important to know that most power stations do not have an MC4 connector on them. So typically what you need is some type of adapter. Your power stations if <laughs> if they're any good, they typically come with an MC4 cable to their respective connector type, like MC4 to 8 millimeter or MC4 to 5521, 5525, Anderson, so on and so forth. Now, this is what one of those cables looks like. You can see that it's hooked into the sun power panel. MC4 is connected in and it has a 5521 on the end, a barrel connector that plugs into your power station. The common MC4 connector type is also waterproof. A lot of people spray some silicone stuff on it to make sure that they're waterproof. So I don't do that. I take them as being waterproof. I lock them in and I just forget about it. That's important to know. Some panels will come with this type of connector. The Harbor Freight panels do. They come with an SAE connector. It's like this little headphone jack looking dip. See if I can reveal it. <laughs> Get it a little closer, a little closer. That's an SAE. The good thing about this panel is it comes with an SAE to MC4 and it also comes with an SAE to 5525, which works with its corresponding power station, which is the big blue cell power 500. Such a good looking panel. Here we have the X-Tar, which is another bifolding panel. This one is more along the lines of the Jackery where it has an eight millimeter built into it. This is the only connection that it has. A lot of uh, solar panels, have a port on the inside. What I mean is they typically have like a female barrel style connector and then they'll include a cable with them like a 55 to 55 male to male cable. And you can plug that cable into the solar panel and then plug that cable into your respective power station. A lot of solar panels that are folding, they have a cable that's built in. So you don't have any options with that. You just have to adapt it at the end. A lot of folding panels are not going to be waterproof. You need to keep that in mind as it relates to your weather. I mean, people have allowed their panels to get wet and they can do all right. The main thing is that that junction box that's typically within a solar panel, a folding solar panel, is not waterproof. The junction boxes on rigid panels in this sun power panel are waterproof so that you don't have to be worried about the rain coming on them or anything like that. Now, with regard to these solar panels, they produce a certain amount of watts and how they come about accomplishing that watts is volts times amps. They have a rating on them that tells you how many volts you can expect under standard test conditions and how many amps you can expect under standard test conditions. Very rarely will you get what's called STC conditions. So very rarely will you get the rated output, a hundred watt panel, you, you might find it hard pressed to get up to 100 watts on that. Now, under certain conditions, like during this particular time of the year when the weather is cold and if the sun is bright, you might get about 90 watts 
92 watts, 87 watts out of a 100 watt panel, but you're not going to get the fully rated power and not very often, if ever. We also need to talk about those things on the back that called uh, the numbers are rated in two separate ways. I'm going to just try and keep this simple. There's the amount of power that comes into that solar panel when it's not connected to something, which is typically noted by the VOC. And another one, I think the max amp, whatever. <laughs> and then there's the amount of power that it can produce when it's connected. If you want to be able to tell the difference, whenever you look at the label or back panel of a solar panel, you can see whichever number is the highest is typically the one that gives you the output when it's not connected to anything. The one that's the lowest, you get it. Just some obvious takeaways. I kind of hinted at it before. The rigid panels you can leave outside. You don't have to be worried about them. They're typically waterproof. I think they're IP65 or IP67 rated, which you can look up those ratings to kind of see what they mean. I leave my rigid panels out all day. Folding panels are very good for portability and setting up temporarily. You don't want to leave folding panels out all day, every day. Flexible panels, for the most part, get a very bad rap. Deservingly so. I haven't had anybody do a video on this in a while, but Will Prouse, uh, DIY Solar Power with Will Prouse, he talks about flexible panels and how they don't stand up very well after six to 12 months. He likes the sun power ones. This particular panel is a sun power one for that reason. That's why I got it. I feel like they're in the same vein as the flexible panels. You kind of don't want to leave them outside all the time because that sun, I mean, it'll beat on them and then possibly damage them. Now with the folding panels, there's also two types of covering that they can have. One is ETFE and the other one I believe is PET. You want to try and avoid PET because that particular coating weathers a lot faster. It can start to peel and crack and all that jazz. ETFE is a lot better, but it's still subject to the abuse that the sun can put on it, which is why I like rigid panels. But you know, I ain't out in the forest camping and stuff like that. We also need to talk about this difference in voltage, right? So you have 12 volt panels and then you have 24 volt panels and there's some panels that go even higher, but for the sake of power stations, we kind of want to stick to about 12 and 24. I'm not saying that that's the rule. You do your own research as it relates to the voltage input that your power station can take in. But if you have these smaller ones, they're typically limited to about the 12 volt range. And it is a range. 12 volt is not a hard line at 12 volts. It typically goes up to about maybe Here's the weird part. <laughs> you can have a 12 volt panel that puts out 25 volts. I know that's strange, but it just is what it is. Like that Bluetti panel that they made, I think it's the SP200 and maybe even the PV200. The voltage on that panel is like 25 volts. A lot of panels have a 24 volt rating on them, but that's still within the 12 volt range. Just to bring the point home, if you look at a portable power station, a lot of times they'll have a rating on their input port and it'll say something like 12 to 24 or 12 to 28 volts or even 12 to 30 volts. You can kind of see how that range of 12 volt can go pretty high. Now, you don't want to make the mistake of buying a 24 volt panel because you think it's 24 volts. We have to go back to this idea of voltage open circuit. And what happens is when you first connect the solar panel, that voltage comes through pretty high and then it settles along with the MPPT and how it can manage that. So a 24 volt panel, when you look at that VOC rating, is typically like 36 or 37 or something like that. And if you refer back to my previous example, 12 to 28, that panel might fry that portable power station. So it gets really interesting and I wanted to make sure that you guys understood that. A 12 volt panel and a 24 volt panel is kind of, you know, they live on the spectrum. There are also panels that have their own charge controller built in. If you're buying something for a portable power station, you do not want a solar panel that has a, a solar charge controller built in. There are some panels that come with them built in and you can bypass them. But if you're going to be hooking it up to a power station, then why buy something that you'd have to bypass unless you want to future proof your purchase? Ah, that's up to you. I, I wouldn't want to bother with that. So the basics of a solar panel, a solar panel produces DC power. If you watched my last video, you know that the batteries in those portable power stations are DC. Here's the thing about the solar panels, though. They produce that voltage at a higher rating. So 18 volts is not going to be able to go into a 12 volt rated battery. That's where the charge controller comes in that's in that portable power station that has to bring down that voltage for a usable rate at which that battery can take it in. It's also important to know that solar panels can work when it's really bright outside, but cloud is covering the sky. 
they'll only produce maybe about 10 to 15 percent of their rated power i have had like 200 watt panels give me about like 40 watts or 20 watts realistically it's usually about 8 to 15 watts of power when it's really cloudy outside but it's still bright during the day it's important to know that you don't get much power but you can get some it is also very important to know that outside of a very very small circumstance you cannot use a solar panel by itself and you don't want to <laughs> because anything you hook up to it you can connect solar panels directly to something and it will work but you're powering that fan at a higher voltage remember solar panels typically put out about 18 volts and they can put out higher volts if you go higher on the scale of the type of solar panels like i talked about 12 volt and 24 volt so you really don't want to be powering <laughs> devices directly and then at that point if you're stripping wires and hooking something up to a device in and of itself then you have way more expertise than i do but for the rest of us yeah solar panels need to be used in conjunction with something else they are not standalone items at all here's a little anecdote just about size 100 watt panels typically cost about one dollar per watt 200 watt panels typically cost the same i think that i have a personal preference for 200 watt panels just for my situation but i understand the need for 100 watt panels because space could be an issue you may need to kind of offset or money could be an issue but i don't think there's any downside if you have the space and you have the physical wherewithal to carry a 200 watt panel it's no different than carrying two 100 watt panels but you just got to be mindful of that then i would go with the 200 watt panels i do like the idea of the 100 watt panels but uh, you know that's that's kind of where i'm at with it typically with a 200 watt panel you end up with less surface area so it's a little bit of a smaller footprint compared to two 100 watt panels i like a 200 watt panel because if you want to use two 100 watt panels in parallel then you need to spend an extra like seven to eight bucks to connect them in parallel you could connect them in series without an extra cable but you have to be mindful of that because series will raise the voltage that voltage will possibly bump up higher than what your smaller portable power station can take if you have a larger portable power station then you should be fine ultimately you just need to look at your voltage requirements or parameters for your power station to make sure that it's within that window that's all i could think about as it relates to solar panels if you have anything that i left out this is a thriving community of knowledgeable people please put a comment down below my next video is going to be about the best portable power stations at about three levels you may want to subscribe if you want to catch that youtube will show it to you whether you're subscribed or not if you watch the content this is i holla <laughs>